Hi, everyone. Welcome back. So today in the podcast, I want to talk about something really important, especially for those people who want to do many things and they're like kind of confused what they should stick with, like more, but they, but also, well, like I mentioned before that unless you try that thing, sometimes it's very hard to know if you really want all of those things that you're thinking in your head and you put down in your list that we worked previously on. So I want you to do something like this that helps help me and help many others that I work with. And I know that others do this as well. So they either do a 30 day thing or 40 days. So I'm going to do the 40 day. So basically what I want you to do is choose one of the things that you listed before or you thought in your head about whatever you have done up until this point, if you've been following my podcast or not, is like take that, um, Uh, like what you're thinking about and kind of like put it into work, you know, like start doing it at home. Spend between like 30 to 45 minutes a day if possible, because that's going to give you enough time to actually like do this 40 days thing every day. Because if you do a little bit less, you might not exactly have the time to like accomplish that whole skill. So let's say you want to do, um, uh, like stitching, for example. So before you even do that, and before you really can come up with great projects and ideas, you're going to have to learn something for it. It's not going to just come like two seconds, you know? So what you want to do is you're going to have to start learning basics, whether it's books, through books, whether it's through videos, whether it's through classes, whatever way you're going to be doing it, but commit yourself to doing it about 30 to 45 minutes a day for 45 days. I'm sorry, 40 days. And in the beginning, you might feel like, oh, like you're going to get distracted. Oh, I want to do this. And I just want to try the other thing because you have so many things that you want to do, passions, goals, and skills. But concentrate on that because in the beginning of obtaining any new skill and understanding it fully and and you kind of like starting to find yourself in it, you have to learn. And the beginning learning part is always not always so interesting for everybody. Like a lot of people just drop it like, oh, it's too hard. It's going to take forever. I don't want to do it. But if you're going to kind of commit yourself and like understand that the beginning is, is not going to be something you might actually like, but after you do the basics, you do like the one-on-one part of everything and you start actually doing those projects related to your skill, you might see, wow, you actually like that. Because in the beginning, you might think, okay, I have to do this. I have to learn. It's the basic steps. It might not motivate you so much. So this 40 days kind of gives you enough time to get the feeling. So you're learning, and you're practicing, and then you're actually doing projects within those days. And by 30 minutes to 45 minutes a day, they'll give you enough time to do something concrete and stable, and you'll feel like you're actually accomplishing. So that's like something... I do recommend you to do. It worked for me for things that I was trying to learn, obtain new things. And after 40 days, you're going to feel, wow, I actually like that. Wow, no, I don't like that. Even though I went through all the processes, it's fun, but it's not something I really want to commit myself to do day in, day out. Maybe I can do it um, in the summers when I'm off, if I'm like a teacher or if you are you do jobs where the summers are not as busy and you don't work so many hours like throughout the year or you feel like okay so this is fun this is great I like it let me try the next thing for 40 days and feel like mm, what would it feel like really then how much how much committed am I to this thing that I tried the skill that I tried now like stitching now you want to try to let's say do some other thing like drawing whatever anything doesn't matter what it is then you can compare those two even after you do that for 40 days and then the next thing. Now you're going to have even a feeling of like what you really want. And that's important because you're going to have distractions, this and that, and you want to do art and then you want to do the stitching and then you want to do other things that you wrote down and you feel like you love like candle making or um, dancing, whatever it is that you have in your mind and things that you're still trying to pick out to work with and then you also know things that are hobbies for you at this point you'll be able to kind of distinguish the hobby or work or seasonal or for the weekend or weekly or monthly you might choose to just do this once a month just to feel satisfied 
that you're not like totally dropping it and that you, you know, like you don't feel like you're giving up on it. So that's also very important in my, in my opinion, to do this kind of exercise to really understand yourself and what you really want. So please do that. If you make, you can keep a log um, of how many minutes you did it, because there will be days and situation where you will not be able to dedicate that 30 to 45 minutes, you know, but try to stick to that. If you did less, that's fine. Maybe the next day catch up on that if you would like to, so you could feel accomplished like that you're doing it for 45 days for a certain amount of time. If not, just keep the log, do the 30 to 45 minutes a day thing. And you will see that at the end of the 40 days, you're able to pick up so much new information and get better at that certain skill that you've been working on day in, day out for a certain amount of time. You want to read books? Read books. You want to do video? So many options that you're not even limited um, to anything today. Like you can learn things on the go. You can learn things different ways now. So do this and try to understand that this is your goal don't be distracted with anything else for just 40 days just to get an idea and know the big picture of what you're trying to achieve by doing this 40-day exercise for yourself and your future endeavors that you're trying to reach. So I hope that you can stick to this kind of commitment and that you can get self-awareness, some clarity for yourself, and that it will answer some questions for yourself. You can do this with a family member, if you would like, if you're trying to find an answer for a family member, for your child, for your student, for anybody around your loved one, friend, family, if you you work with kids or clients, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. This can really help anybody, really, because the beginnings are hard, and the commitment is also hard, and the distractions are also hard to go, like, ignore. So a lot of times people will not have this clear picture. By doing this, you're kind of taking away all these um, like a blocks out of your way, you're going to kind of get a clear picture of what, what's important at the end of it, you know? So, but don't give up in the beginning. It will be hard. I'm going to tell you, you will have to learn. You're going to have to commit, but keep going step by step, day by day. And you will see that you will get somewhere. I promise you, cause I did it. Otherwise I wouldn't tell you because then it's just like, what am I promising you? And my goal is to kind of help you not like just whatever, just say things for the sake of saying it work with my own kids, you know? So that's why I'm saying how you can, and my kids are not teenagers. They're like young kids and there are certain things that I wanted to achieve with them and they wanted to achieve. So we did this for some time. Of course, you might have to do with kids, like with rewards, like I did with my daughter, a reward system. I'll give you an example where, like, my oldest daughter did not like to read. Like, if you would read to her, that's fine. But, like, not even so much like. And so I made a whole system where she had to read with me first every day for some time. And I gave, I gave her as a reward something that she was really interested in to get, like a big prize at the end of, let's say, a month. So we did that for some time. And then... The, the rules changed where she had to read because when she was able to read, she had to read a certain amount of time in a day and we would keep a log. Now we get her something that she really wants. It doesn't have to be big. It's not the point. You're not spoiling them. You just want them to like get into the habit of doing it and they're going to love it at the end themselves because they're going to see, wow, they've been missing, it, missing out on it. So we were doing that for some time. And you know what? Now she's much older and she reads so much books. That like, I don't have enough books for her. You know, I'm constantly learning to lie, but I'm constantly buying books for her. She's constantly asking for gifts of books. So from a child who went, who didn't like to read and was not interested in to be read to, to a child who can stop reading as in love, that's the only thing she can do a whole day. Like give her the book. She can be there all day and, and she enjoys it a lot. And you give her the gift of books. She'll be so happy. She wouldn't even care about the toys. So you see that even that experience worked on my child personally and I understand that. So I hope that it will help you in your lives. And and if you do have any questions, and if you want to ask me, share something, please do so. Feel free. I'm here to help as much as I can. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.